Okay, we have Windows 7 running here. Let's talk about service packs. To find out the service pack level of Windows 7, we would navigate to Start, then right-click Computer, then select Properties. That brings up the System window, which shows the Windows Edition, which is Windows 7 Ultimate, and it shows we are running Service Pack 1, which, as of the recording of this video, is the latest Service Pack for Windows 7. That could change in the future, but other versions of Windows, such as Windows 8 and Windows Vista, the navigation will be very similar. Uh, the idea here is that you want to usually have the latest Service Pack running. If this computer was not running Service Pack 1, this field would be blank, and it would be otherwise known as Service Pack 0. And at that point, we would want to update the system. We could do that with the Windows Update program, or we could go to the Microsoft website. For example, we could go to support.microsoft.com. And we'll go to that site now. The Microsoft support site has all kinds of information, all the downloads you could want, and a knowledge base with all kinds of troubleshooting. And so what we could do here is we could download the latest uh, service pack directly from the site, and we'd just go to the query field here and search, for example, Windows 7 SP1. Press Enter, and we'll get a lot of links here. For example, the first link is information about Service Pack 1 for Windows 7. We'll click that. And we'll scroll down a little bit, and it says here how to obtain Service Pack 1 for Windows 7. And basically, we would just go to the uh, Windows link here, and we would download and install the Service Pack, and then restart the system. And the install is pretty easy to do, it's just a basic installation. You're just clicking next through it. But you want to make sure that that service pack is updated so that you can close up some of the security holes and vulnerabilities in the system. An organization might also use an optical disk to update individual computers. Or if there are a lot of computers, they might stream the service pack over the network. Now, service packs are large groups of patches and updates, but they are static. Once one is released, it remains the same. So additional updates are always necessary. By default, this is taken care of by the Windows Update program. To make modifications to Windows Update, we can go to Start, All Programs, and then we'll scroll down to the Windows Update program and click that to open it. And from here, we can install new updates if we wish to. And we can change settings of how we're alerted to updates and how the updates are installed here. And click the Change Settings link, and we get several options here. The one I have it set to now is Check for Updates, but let me choose whether to download and install them. And in the case study, that's what you wanted to select. Um, installing updates automatically, you may not want to do that in the company, even though it says recommended here by Microsoft, because you don't know specifically what every update is going to do. You could also have the system download updates, but let you choose whether to install them. If you do that for every computer on the network, that could uh, use up a lot of bandwidth. Uh, so that might be a no-no also. So often, the best option is check for updates, but let me choose whether to download and install them. And really, what you want to do, if you have a bigger network, is stream all these updates across all the computers with some type of management software, such as Microsoft SCCM or the older SMS or a third-party uh, tool. Keep in mind that some computers will need to be updated beyond the service pack and beyond what is automatically downloaded from Windows Update. Patches for specific problems are known as hotfixes. It's important to know how to acquire these hotfixes, also known as update rollups, and they are usually found at the Microsoft Support website and are listed by knowledge base number. So they're a KB number. For example, one hotfix that repairs a memory leak in Windows 7 Service Pack 1 can be found at the following link that I'm going to click on now. And this is article number 2911106 in the Microsoft Knowledge Base. 
it actually fixes a lot of documented issues and can be an important fix for various Windows operating systems in addition to Windows 7 Service Pack 1. Over time, these hotfixes are gathered together in automatically downloaded Windows update groups, if it is deemed necessary, and then they are ultimately added to newer service packs. But for now, this is the type of thing that you might find that's beyond the service pack and beyond Windows Update. And uh, if you look down here, we see uh, this portion of the update package fixes a memory leak in the OLEAUT 32.dll file in Windows 7. And, uh, you know, that's a problem that could cause the comm server to fail, possibly cause your Windows Explorer window to close, that type of thing. So this may be necessary for your Windows 7 computer or your 2008 server or Windows 8 box or Server 2012 box. Uh, it all depends on what the computer is, how far it's been updated, and what the problems are that you're actually having. So that's a little bit about uh, how to update Windows 7 or really any Microsoft Windows operating system to the latest service pack and how to use Windows Update. Now let's take it a little bit further. Uh, first, we're going to show how to find the version level within the command prompt. And, uh, you know, using the GUI is great, but we also like to use the command prompt as well. So I'll bring that up now. And usually I'll run in the administrator mode, the elevated mode. And right now I'm in the command prompt here. Easy way to find out the version is just to type VER for version. And that'll show what is running. Now version 6.1.7601 is Windows 7 with Service Pack 1, even though it doesn't say Service Pack 1. Uh, a more in-depth tool in the command prompt is the system info command. That'll load up some information and tell us exactly all of the uh, hotfixes that have been installed in order here. But if we scroll backwards in time here, we'll see towards the beginning, we see the name of the computer, the operating system running, and the version. 6.1.7601 is Windows 7 with Service Pack 1. Uh, Windows 7 without Service Pack 1 would be 6.1.7600 makes sense. So you get a lot of information with that system info uh, command. You can also run the uh, winver command from here or from the run prompt, and that'll bring up a uh, the about Windows uh, GUI screen, and it shows you again version 6.1.7601, Service Pack 1, and Windows 7 Ultimate. So lots of different ways to get this information in the command prompt in Windows. All right, Windows is not the only operating system in town, obviously. So we have other operating systems that we want to check on our network. For example, Mac OS X, and I have that running here now. If you want to find out the version of this OS, we'll go to the Apple menu and then select About This Mac. That brings up the About This Mac screen, and it tells us we're running OS X. But the key here is what version, and this is version 10.9.1, which is Mavericks. As of the recording of this video, that's the latest one. However, if we had an older version, 10.8 or 10.7, uh, you know, whether it's Mountain Lion or whatever, we could click the software update button to uh, update to the latest version, as long as the hardware of the system can handle it. And, uh, you know, there's various requirements for that that you can find on the Apple website. Uh, if we click here uh, where it says version, it'll change over to the build number. If we click again, it'll give you the serial number for the computer, which I've grayed out for this system. If we click it again, it brings us back to the version number. So uh, also, if you want to update the system, you can go to the Apple uh, menu and then software update. In addition, if updates become available, they'll pop up on your screen automatically. We can also find out the version number in the terminal. We'll bring up the terminal now. And there's a lot of commands you can use to uh, find out the version. I'll use SW underscore VERS and press enter. And that'll tell us it is Mac OS X and uh, the product 
is 10.9.1. That's uh, Mavericks, and it shows the build version. So you can do any of this stuff in the command line, just like you can in the GUI. Moving on, let's talk Linux. I'm running Ubuntu here. Let's show the version within the GUI and the command line. First, within the GUI, we would go to the settings icon. Then we would select details. And that'll show us we're running Ubuntu 12.04. And it gives some additional information. Now, 12.04 is not the latest version of Ubuntu, but I'm good with this version. This is the one I want to run for my purposes. As of the recording of this video, there is 13.04. However, for each version, there are updates. Just like there are, say, with Windows. Windows 7 has updates. Windows 8 has updates, and so on. The updates can be found here, and you know there are, yes, yeah, some updates. There's 425 updates in the Update Manager. I may want specific updates from there and hotfixes to do specific things in my system. And you can update this OS directly from the Update Manager. It's not like the old school Linux where you'd have to do it all uh, uh, uncompressing tarballs and things like that within the command line. That is a different video altogether. Here, we could do it directly within the GUI. It's pretty simple to do within the Update Manager. So if we need updates, this is where we would go. We can also find out the uh, version within the command line. And if we go to the dashboard, select Terminal. I have it in the recent apps. So we'll bring that up. And that places it here. We'll open that guy up. And we have a command line similar to what we saw in OS X. OS X is a derivative of Linux. Here we're using actual Linux, or Linux if you prefer. And uh, there's lots of commands to find out the version. The command I'm going to use is lsb underscore release uh, dash d. And that tells us we're running Ubuntu 12.04.2. Uh, again, we could update from the command line if we wish to, but Ubuntu makes it very easy to do so within the Update Manager. I'll click on that now, and you'll see we have all kinds of software updates available for the computer. We can check off which ones we want specifically and then install those updates. Okay, we talked about Linux on the desktop side of things with Ubuntu. Now let's move to the mobile device side of Linux with Android. Uh, here's one of my Android devices that I run. This is a smartphone, and what we want to do is find the version for this device and also find uh, how to update the software if necessary. We're at the home screen right now, and what we're going to do is tap and swipe down from the top to bring up the notification area, and we're going to go to Settings. Once at the Settings area, we're going to uh, scroll up, basically swipe up all the way to the bottom of the screen to the About section, and we'll tap on that. And that brings up a lot of information. First thing we're looking for is the version of the software. So we want software information. Tap on that now. And we see here we're running Android version 4.1.1. And there are newer versions of Android uh, currently as of the recording of this video. But uh, this is what's loaded with this particular device. Now, if I wanted to update the device, if it was possible to update the device, we would need to go back a little bit and go back to that About screen. And we'd select the Software Updates option. And from there, you can see that we have it checkmarked to uh, schedule checks from the uh, Android server and uh, check for any updates automatically. Also, you could do a check now. We can click on that now. That'll go online and look to the server for any particular updates, if there are any. And we can see here that we have a uh, package installer, which is a security enhancement. And uh, it manages the device for installing updates over the air. I'm not really too interested in this installer right now, but who knows? Your company might need to have this as a security feature. So that's exactly the type of security concern that we're 
interested in with uh, mobile devices. And it's why we want to know what version we're running and where to go to get the updates. Okay, let's round out this video with iOS. Once again, on this mobile device, we want to find out what the version is and how to go about updating it if necessary. And we're at the home screen here, and what we want to do is go to the settings option. We'll bring that up. That brings us to the settings screen, and we want to go to general. Tap on general, and on the right-hand side, we see about and software update. Those are the uh, two options that we want. We'll start with about. Tap on that. And if you look about halfway down, you see we have the version is 7.0.4. As of the recording of this uh, video, this is the latest version. And in fact, uh, was necessary, as I'll mention in a second. Now we're going to go back to the general. We're going to tap up here on general and go to the general screen again. And go down to software update and tap on that. And it tells us we're running 7.0.4. The software is up to date. Now, if a new update comes out later on, which I'm sure it will very soon, uh, from here, the system would tell you, you have the option to update if you wish. And usually you'll get messages in other places of the operating system letting you know as well. Uh, you may or may not want to do this. That depends on uh, if you need the update or not, if your company's policy requires it. Uh, in some cases, organizations say, hold off on updates until we've tested it on various machines. So you may not want to do that update immediately when it comes out. And this update was necessary. Uh, I was at 7.0.2, and there was a couple of security issues uh, and possible vulnerabilities with uh, applications that I was using on this device. And uh, once I updated to 7.0.4, the security vulnerabilities were patched and there was the threat was no more. So that's the, you know, that's the reason for doing this. That's why we need to know where to find out the, what the version is and how to go about doing the update. So that's about it for this video. Take care.